What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to High Q Season 2, Episode 2. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer that provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. If you want to increase your vertical jump, make sure you check out my online jump training programs linked below that have helped thousands of athletes increase their vertical jump, strength, power, and speed. I have a bodyweight only program where you can work out with no equipment at home and programs that utilize all the standard gym equipment. Thanks for providing the geography in the anime. It helps me appreciate the type of travel that Karasuno goes through and helps me appreciate the story overall on a deeper level. This is a very intriguing analysis between Oikawa and Kageyama. The best setters have the ability to make their hitters better and perform at their best, which require different heights, locations, and tempos for each player. When it comes to some of the best setters of all time, Loyball is the first on my list. He doesn't always set the fastest sets or the flashiest type of setting, but for some reason, every time he does set a player, they're able to approach at their maximum velocity, have all the options in the world, and put their entire body into the spike. It makes sense why Ushiwaka believes that Oikawa is a better setter than Kageyama, even though Kageyama is more physically talented. I promise I will eventually learn these names. I thank you. I promise I will eventually learn the names I thank you for the kind reminders. I am definitely from the concrete as well, so I can relate to this comment. Although I would argue to say that Hinata is not from the concrete because he naturally has exceptional jumping ability and is super fast. He just doesn't have much playing experience or height. I'm curious if my opinion about Ushiwaka will change over time, but so far everything that he says seems to be true and without any ulterior motives. The fact that he invited Kageyama and Hinata to come watch their practice communicates to me that he's someone that respects another person's competitive ability to be their best. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on my Patreon where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Q party started. That's right, they just had a team meeting about what happens if they don't make their grades. <laughs> Something tells me that Hinata is not the most astutious student. Because all he fantasizes about is volleyball. <laughs> Fixing his wig, I love it. Uh, of course, bad principles, loving to use their power to torture people. <laughs> oh, you, I would think that Kageyama's actually would be a studious and on top of his grades. Who's that guy? That guy, a player that I don't know, it doesn't look like Daichi. <laughs> Koratsuki's got some snarky remarks to make. Kochi! Uh oh, what is he gonna bring up? <laughs> Do I look like someone got good grades? Oh, so honest. I love Coach Ukai. Oh, poor guy. He's just asking for help. And so are these guys. <laughs> Everyone's praying for good grades. Uh, Kageyama's still in his ghost pose. 
<laughs> Without these four idiots. I love it. Something I will have to say about the teams that I coach is majority of the time, the players with the lowest grades end up being some of my better players and my better athletes. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been some exceptional players that have really great grades and are taking all these tough classes and also the, some of the best players on my team. But that is a pattern that I did notice when a grade checks came around. It was usually when I had about like three or four starters, I would get a little nervous around grade checks. They would kind of be at that, that C minus or 70% or B minus level kind of on the edge. Uh, in the USA, you have to get a 2.0 GPA or higher, at least where I am from in California, in order to participate in sports or extracurricular activities. So luckily at my school, academics is a pretty high priority, so I rarely had to worry about students not passing the classes, but I know it's a big concern for many of other schools because it's, it's normal for kids to get B's and C's in their classes. I love the determination. Direct sunlight. Curious what that's going to mean in this episode. <laughs> the four guys with the worst grades are kneeling in front of them. Oh, I love this. This is Daichi taking charge. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I'm curious how Zuki is doing in school. He seems like a nerd, someone that's going to be pretty smart because he's so calculated with the way he plays. Yeah, there you go. Be prepared for the consequences. You can't complain about not doing well if you're not doing the work to try to do well. Uh, I wonder what suggestion he gave him. Ooh, he's holding Kageyama accountable to what he said. I love it. That's the first time Kageyama admitted some defeat to Hinata. <laughs> yep, just like my suspicion about Hinata. Uh oh, they're gonna ask Tsuki for help. Oh, I can see why they were hesitant because they don't like him. I did not expect it to come down to this where Hinata and Kageyama would ask Tsuki for help and I can totally see why they're nervous about this request because they haven't had a good relationship with Tsuki and they probably don't like him in the same way that I don't like Tsuki. But the real question is, are you willing to do what it takes to still play volleyball? You might be willing to do what it takes in the gym and on the court, but what about off the court? Are you willing to work on your nutrition and eat the right foods off the court so you can be even better on the court? One suggestion I have for all the students, athletes out there that are struggling in school is you have to be just as regimented about your studies as you are about your training. It's not that you have to love it as much as your training. And I'll be honest, when I was in high school, volleyball was up here, my studies were down here, and video games were like a close second. <laughs> so how did I get through school? I had mostly Bs, a couple of As, a couple of Cs, and honestly, I didn't work my butt off in school. I really did, did just enough to make sure that I didn't have to worry about failing, and most importantly, that I could still compete in my sport of volleyball. In California, you need at least a 2.0 GPA, which means a minimum of all Cs or 70% grades for all your classes on average in order to be allowed to compete. I think that's a great incentive because I do believe that school is important to develop other skills in your life and it's a great way to help athletes that have trouble staying focused in the classroom. So how do we get to make sure that we can pass our classes and do well so that we don't have to worry about whether or not you can compete? So volleyball practices in general are going to take up around two and a half to three hours per day. That includes travel, that includes getting ready. So your practices are probably gonna be around two hours. Traveling there is gonna be around 30 minutes. 
Uh, so roughly around three hours, including the eating and all the stuff getting ready. That means you have four to six hours of the rest of the day, assuming you're sleeping at 10 o'clock, for example, to work on your studies. And on game days, you're probably going to be at school for four to five hours, maybe six if the games go super long, but that's going to be rare. So on those days, you have less time. So you just have to plan ahead by weeks. So know how many games you're playing that week and plan accordingly. On my practice days, I have to look at what's due like two or three days ahead so that on the days I do have more time to study, I can do the bulk of the work like on a practice day. Okay. And on game days, I have to do my easier and shorter assignments because I'm not going to have that much time. And you have to plan ahead of time, just the same way you would have the discipline in the gym and on the court where you plan out exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. So you just have to focus on completing the work. The same thing goes for your academics. Uh, For example, if you get home at three o'clock, I have to dedicate from three to four is going to be my toughest assignment. So whichever subject you struggle in the most, you got to focus your energy and spend at least an hour on that. And then you choose your second toughest and then usually end on the subjects that are easiest for you because you can do that pretty quickly. Do not freestyle your academics or your plans because failing to plan is planning to fail and you cannot freestyle success. You have to plan and be disciplined just like you were on the volleyball court. You have to be disciplined in the classroom. As for tutoring, Ooh, Yamaguchi's trying to convince him. <laughs> he wants Kageyama to, to beg and grovel. <laughs> oh, Tsuki is just loving this. <laughs> They just happen to be arguing outside of Coach Ukai's shop. That's funny. What's Shimizu doing there? Maybe she's asking them to come support the boys' volleyball club. Arigato. <laughs> <laughs> he not the got a smile from Shimizu. Ah, oh, what a good guy. And I'm sure he's not doing this just because he loves the club. I don't think he's doing this just because he likes Shimizu. That is true. He's got to focus on on his studies. Oh, she recognizes him as the ultimate decoy. What? She's smart. Oh, this is cute. Tsuga and Tsuki are helping their their teammates. Who is this talking? This voice sounds so different. Tsuki <laughs> talking. I thought it was him, but it didn't sound like him. He sounds more gentle and less sarcastic. <laughs> you really are a simpleton. <laughs> Oh man, Suki's like an Asian dad here, just all shame and negativity. Oh, there you go. That's right. Bring up Tokyo. Be quicku. Eh. She. That's right. Make it relatable to them. I have a really cool story to share about how Daichi, 
is making English relatable to something that Kageyama loves, which is volleyball. He's doing all these hand signals, but more importantly, he's saying English words that we use on a regular basis for volleyball. And he's showing that, look, you can learn it. You just did it for volleyball. Why not do it for school? So the story I had to share is about Paul Favorites from PJF Performance. And he's one of the world's best renowned athletic performance trainers. Um, he works with James Harden and all these other great NFL and NBA players and someone that I look up to for my own training information. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel and Instagram at PGF Performance. One of my favorite episodes from his podcast was when he had his wife on the podcast and they were talking about some personal stuff and she, he talked about how he used to be in special education. If you're not from the USA, uh, we have general education where majority of the students uh, with at least average, slightly below average or above average um, mental capacity intelligence are going to be in the regular classes, right? Your regular math, science, English, PE. And then there's special education where for students who are really struggling at a mental level, either you know, slower at learning, have trouble focusing and have to take medication or have some learning disabilities, they get put in a separate classroom. And occasionally they might get put into the general and mainstream classes. But Paul Favorites actually was in special education. I don't remember what his specific disability was. He didn't share that. But he said he would have to get taken out of classes and take tests in a separate room and get like a modified test to accommodate his learning ability. So he admitted that he was not very smart at school and yet now he has a multi-million dollar business and he's one of the leading researchers in, in athletic performance and jump training. And he is very well versed in the science and the exercise science behind all the training. And how did he get there? He didn't start learning how to read at a higher level and comprehend at a higher level until he was motivated to learn about the human body and training. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I'll, I'll link the podcast below because it's definitely good to listen to. But it wasn't until he had the motivation to improve his training and exercise science knowledge did he finally teach himself how to read and read at a deeper level and was way more motivated to learn how to read and comprehend and the biology. I mean, exercise science is such a complex subject. You have to learn physiology, uh, chemistry, physics, all these things. Uh, to understand those concepts and he was able to learn all that on his own because he was so motivated because it was a, about a topic he loved training so i love that daichi is using volleyball as a motivation for kageyama to learn english to pass his classes <laughs> Yeah, you learned it less than a day. Ho oh, ho! In your face, Kageyama! <laughs> Make it a competition! That's great. Ooh, study partners at home. Nishinoya, <laughs> This is such a great team. I wish all teams had teammates that were so willing to help the other, other teammates. Live more like a man, Norio. <laughs> Nishinoya's face is so proud, like, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> He'll memorize things that are relevant to, to volleyball. Oh, is this Sailor Moon? Saiko. Who is this? Oh, she's an aggressive one. Punching just like the female volleyball player, player from Karasuno. Oh, college, huh? Tanaka sister. Oh. <laughs> Not surprised that Tanaka sister is also energetic personality. Via chess raps. <laughs> 
Anoshita. Who is Anoshita? More video games? Oh, that's cute. They're they're texting each other. He feels safe enough to open up to oh, I forgot this. Kenma, that's his name. That's good to see that Hinata and Kenma are becoming friends. <laughs> oh, it'd be so fun to have someone like Hinata on the team, just so energetic. It can get annoying at times, but I would much rather deal with someone with too much energy than less. Oh, look at that ear, <laughs> so big. I wonder what she's... why is it up to her? What is she doing? Seeking members. Maybe she's trying to help develop, recruit for the next class? Find, oh, she's training another manager! So it's not Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is not Tanaka's sister. I'm not a fan of this new mid-episode mid uh, music. <laughs> the mole, that's right, the mole, the sexy mole in her mouth. <laughs> I wonder what this blonde girl's motivation is for being, wanting to be the next manager. Oh, she's shaking. Sailor Moon! Yachi Hitoka. Oh, okay. That guy's name is Yamaguchi. <laughs> Asahi, the drug dealer. Intimidating her already. With his big, big stature. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of pressure. She's just trying it out. She, like, she reminds me of Hinata in the first game. She's super nervous. That's great. This is Shimizu is just taking ownership of the team by trying to find a qualified replacement for her. Thinking ahead, she's the only one that can make the team cry. <laughs> so many big guys. These are very nice guys, though. <laughs> That stabbing illustration was... <laughs> that was funny. Oh. She probably thinks, oh, this guy is a... This guy's a badass. This guy's a gangster. <laughs> oh. It'd be different if Tsuki had work to do, but he just doesn't want to be bothered. That's messed up. Stingy Shima, yeah. Finally, we get Yamaguchi doing something outside of Tsuki. Oh, he is trying to help them. <laughs> They're the least intimidating people from the team. It's 
Especially Hinata, he's he's super friendly. <laughs> that's gotta be the principle. Oh man, that's so hilarious. Here's a funny inside joke for the Asian community and I'm sure just any intense parenting. But <laughs> growing up, my mom always worried about me becoming homeless. She's like, well, if you don't do well here, then you're not going to do well here and then you're going to end up on the street. And she wasn't as bad as a lot of the other parents of my friends or some of the students that I teach where man, their parents are like super hardcore. If you don't get into Stanford, you're going to live on the streets type of thing. But it's just funny how everything ends up being homeless. If you don't pass this class, you're not going to get into this college, then you're not going to get a good job, and then you're going to be homeless. If you dye your hair, people are going to think you're a gangster, and if people think you're a gangster, they're not going to hire you. If they don't hire you, you're going to end up on the street. <laughs> it just always had this domino effect of ending up being homeless, so this is super relatable for me. Is this relatable for you? I'm just curious, were your parents like this? Maybe even sell my organs. It's so intense. I like how Hinata had to introduce Kageyama. <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Oh, poor guys. I wonder why Tsuki even agreed. Probably because he knows he needs them on the team. Oh, of course she's gonna be nicer. She's just trying to fit in her she's just trying to fit in herself. Oh, she could be the team manager and the team tutor. Uh oh. I hope she wasn't filling in answers for them and helping them cheat. That would be bad. Yeah, I totally. I was that guy. I would be fidgety in my desk. Can't wait to go outside and play volleyball and run and play basketball. Oh, it's funny how he's talking about another great setter in front of Kageyama. I wonder if Kageyama gets irritated with that. Ah, but he acknowledges it. Good players are good players. That's why I like Kageyama, because he's a, also a straight shooter. Yeah, the, the middle blocker was huge from Dateko. <laughs> That's right, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I love it, yeah. That was a cool scene with the shadow going on his, on his face as he said that. I feel the same way. I feel like the bigger they are, the, the harder I want to work. Mm, she knows who the little giant is. He's got to be a legend. Ah, uh, okay, so she's just referring to a general term they use in the Japanese language. Not necessarily to that specific little giant from Karasuno. <laughs> 
You're not just waving by and then Kageyama just gives a bow. That's a perfect contrast of their personalities. Man, even the way she she jogs into the gym is very cheapest. <laughs> Good for you, Hinata. Yeah, Hinata is, he is good at making people feel welcome. Actually, I'm going to comment on that. This is beyond just being a good communicator. Hinata has a spirit of, I don't care who you are. I'm going to respect you as a human being. And maybe we can be friends. It's very rare to meet people that good natured. And I think that's why I feel also feel drawn to Hinata because I feel like that's how I want to be as a person is I don't want to write off anybody simply because of how they look, where they come from. And the only way I would evaluate someone is how they conduct themselves, their character and how they treat me. I think a lot of that stems from Hinata knowing what it's like to always have to work hard for what you want, being a shorter athlete, living far away from campus and having to bike to school on a hill having to work just to play a little bit of volleyball in middle school and then now in volleyball having to work even harder to play against bigger players and have everyone doubt him all the time so when you're always at this kind of bottom part of society where people are always doubting you and putting you down and you feel like you have to work hard for even the simplest things you're going to be a lot more empathetic and understanding of all different types of people <laughs> oh, we got that that famous high Q stretch. Stray shots. Oh, like balls flying everywhere and possibly hitting you in the body or the face. That is true. <laughs> That's another pose of like in in anime is when they have like a nervous type of talk they scratch the back of their head. Left off. Oh, there's the the stray ball. Oh, he knocked that with the save. Saved his life. <laughs> That's what they mean by the stray shots. <laughs> That's right, they haven't seen Shimizu talk this much ever. <laughs> I love this mentorship, just explaining the history of Karasuno. Ooh. There's been so much story in this episode that I haven't even got to talk about any technique, so really happy to see this little scrimmage scene so we finally get to talk about some volleyball technique. I think this is Daichi, no, no, that's Tanaka because I see a little bit of the shaved head. So great digging technique here. And what's amazing is you even see the detail of how he's crossing his hands. You see how his right fingers are folding over. And that's a good way to form your platform. You can either kind of cross them together like that. I like to grab the hands so they're really locked in place. So great detail about that when you're forming your platform. And also look at the angle how he's digging the ball back to the center of the court. So Asahi is hitting to the right, okay? And I'm assuming that Tanaka is close to the left sideline. So the way we bring the ball back is you wanna get your platform around the ball. So if this is the ball, a lot of people make the mistake by digging behind the ball. And so when we dig behind the ball, the ball is just gonna deflect off to the side. So at an angle like this, you have to get your platform on the side of the ball and slightly under to angle it back into the court. And the way you do that also is by dropping your inside shoulder. So if I'm on the left side, I'm going to drop my right shoulder. That's my inside shoulder. Great digging technique by Tanaka. 
Some beautiful backspin on that dig. That's what you want. Helps the ball stay in the air a little bit longer and off the net. Oginishi. That's a lot of vowels there. Oh, I love it, yeah. Let those those cuts sting and those scars motivate you. <laughs> Nishinoe not to jump in the highest. Can't tell whether she's nervous or enamored with what's going on. Here are my immediate reactions to episode 2. It's really cool to see how the storyline talked about some more realistic and serious topics like the struggle that students have in school. And I know that's probably especially sensitive in Japan where there's so much pressure to succeed in school, to get into the best universities, to try to get the best corporate job. So I'm sure this is very relatable for students that maybe don't feel like they fit in into that really intense academic pressure. But that's why sports and extracurriculars are so important for students to participate in because it's, it's critical for young people to find something that they succeed at. Whether it's music, sports, chess club, martial arts, something outside of school because that's really where your confidence will come from. If you feel like you can succeed at one thing, then you're gonna have the confidence to succeed at other things. And a lot of times with the high school students that I've worked with, when they feel like they have nothing they're interested in or nothing that they feel like they're good at, they're just gonna have a general low motivation and lack of focus. So it was great to see this human element in Haikyuu. It was also awesome to see how supportive the entire Karasuno team was. And no surprise that Suga and Daichi really took charge to keep their team motivated and focused to do well in school so that they can all go to Tokyo and to compete. One thing that I've done in the past with the teams that I've coached is we would have a meeting at the beginning of the year and just let people talk about some of the common concerns and struggles they have about school and also give an opportunity for players that feel like they excel at certain subjects. So maybe there's a couple players that excel at math, science, English, whatever the subject might be. And we'd always encourage them to be available to help the students that are struggling. And having that open communication and normalizing the idea that it's okay to struggle in school. And in fact, creating a culture where we encourage those that excel to help uplift their teammates and help them as well. I was surprised that Tsuki was actually willing to tutor them, but I'm also not surprised that he wasn't willing to bend an inch to help them a little bit more. So I'm really glad that Hinata and Kageyama found somebody that was going to spend even more time to help them catch up in their schoolwork. I'm curious what type of dynamic the new prospective team manager is going to bring. So far, she's just brought a tons of nervous energy, but she's already shown her usefulness by helping Hinata and Kageyama, but also taking actually a unique interest in being part of a team. And that's really the beauty of a team that has a great culture, is you want people to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves, whether they're a player, a coach, a team manager, an advisor, if you're just in it just to play volleyball and try to win, it's going to be a very disappointing experience at times and also might feel a little empty. But when you have a culture where people are working hard for each other and together we're trying to build something bigger than our volleyball experience, that's when you walk away with life-changing experiences. And that's something that I try to provide with the teams that I coach is we want to be more than just volleyball. So regardless of however you're involved, whether you spend most of the time on the bench, you're a starter, you're a coach, you're a team manager, you wanna make sure that everyone feels like they're contributing to the team's success and we all come away with a life-changing experience. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you check out all my other reaction videos with the playlist link below and we'll see you guys in episode three.